No intro. We have a lot to talk about. We're obviously talking about the Snyder Cut of Justice League right now on the Entertainment Jungle. No intros. I'm Cornelius. I got Walter, Ryan Alliance, 66. Right into it. Overall thoughts on the Snyder Cut of Justice League. We'll keep this brief and then we'll get really into it. Let's go with the one person who didn't see the original cut, 66. Way too long. It was turned up to 11 for the entire movie. So you can't have an epic ending when the entire thing is at 11. So you you have to have ups and downs. And this thing was either like super quiet. And we're going to talk about someone's dad. And then boom, 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 boom. Action, action, movie, music, boom, 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 boom. It's too much. Too much. All right. Too much. Ryan the Lion. <laughs> As someone who did see the original Justice League, I will say that I thought that this was a better movie, but that still doesn't make it a good movie. It was definitely too long. It was definitely Zack Snyder's vision. Oh my god. <laughs> and it was, you know, it still left something to be desired to me. So I'm going to let Walter go next because he might steal my line. So what are your overall thoughts? I don't know. So... <laughs> I didn't want to watch this at all. I hated it, but then reviews started showing up. I was reading these comments, and people are saying this is the best superhero movie ever, almost as good as Endgame. And I'm like, oh, man, this might be great. Like, it's comment after comment. And then all the Rotten Tomatoes, all every, everything was great. And I was like, oh, okay. Watched it, and I was wrong. I, I can't believe I was wrong that these people were that wrong. Like, they, it was, they, I was like, what are they watching? Oh my god. So, obviously, I have issues. For a second, I thought you actually enjoyed this. Because this was just overload of characters and music and sound effects and CG that was bad. It's better than the first, I agree. This yes. actually, this had better CGI than the first one. That's yeah. bad. They improved upon specific things and i'm not saying it's bad like i could do better i'm just holding it up to star wars and marvel that's all i'm doing we'll get into that because that's what we should do that is a that is a question coming up in a second although i do think the wonder woman music is really cool anyway that's <laughs> of course this is the one movie that i did research before and after i watched it <laughs> because i i saw the first one so my, I just want to know what face do you make to represent like an ellipsis, like three dots? Because that's how I feel. I feel like it was better than the original, but was it good? I don't know. I'm like really in the middle. And what I thought Walter was going to say is when the bar is so low, you can walk over it. Anything's going to be better. So that's what I was assuming he was going to say. So this was four hours and two minutes long. And I will preface this by saying I love slow motion shots. Yes. That's <laughs> but if he... If he put any more slow motion shots in this, I think it would have been a 24-hour movie. I mean, he, he could have sped up a little bit, right? <laughs> this was a 20, like a two and a half hour movie, but Easy. every scene was slow motion. And you know what drives me insane? Um, I loved uh, Man of Steel, yeah. and it was th the best parts of it wasn't slow motion, mm -hmm. and he directed that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. When he sped things up and watched you watch people fight, and it was just like boom, boom, boom. That made it great, but this one's like all slow motion. And I'm like, come on! Like when Wonder Woman did it, when she sped up, that was great. And then yeah. every other scene was slow. I was like, I don't know why you had to do every scene like that. That scene in the bank was so much better than the original version of it. That was so cool. Yeah. Maybe he can't do regular motion. No, I'm <laughs> he hasn't learned how to do other shots yet. Ryan the Lion, are you? I, I love slow motion, but I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean. I loved the slow motion shots when I saw them in The Watchmen or 300. And at this point, I'm a little over it, Zack Snyder. I get it. <laughs> you like doing that. You like having your slow motion shots with a slow version of a song playing over it. I've seen it a lot from you. I get it. I knew it was coming, but I didn't uh, need wait, it. Wait, you knew it was coming all every like 50 times? <laughs> I had well, I knew there was going to be a, a lot more of it than we got in the original <laughs> Justice League. I wasn't surprised by the amount that we had. I wish we took an over under bet on how many times because <laughs> the the new intro to Flash when he saves Iris, which you don't really know it's her, but anyway, I thought that was cool. <laughs> no, I never seen something that was cool and weird at the same time. That was the dumbest scene ever. He slow motioned a hot dog. I mean, <laughs> come on, like. 
the girl that's Iris West who ends up being, you know, the Flash's girlfriend and Look, that's cool because like I don't know that and that's cool that they just incorporated that into this movie. If everything was like that, that's great. But I feel like they needed two or three more movies to build up to this 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 climax of this whole thing. Yes. But <laughs> hold on, can I say something about the slow motion thing? On the slow motion, if that was the worst thing about this movie, the movie would be great. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Okay? I'm cool with the slow motion. Yeah. That was not the worst thing about this movie by far. That was like the tenth worst thing about this movie. But it just prolonged our agony. That's the issue. So I think this is going to go down a rabbit hole. So let's see. Is there anything that you really liked that was really cool? Because I have a moment that I don't remember from the original that was really dope. It was when Superman shows up at the end battle and Steppenwolf literally puts his axe down and he just catches it with his shoulder and doesn't even blink. I was like, that's pretty cool. I'm not impressed. <laughs> where was that in the first one? Like, where were scenes like that? You want to see these heroes do something like that. And that's, I was like, all right, cool. Where was that? Was there anything else that like you thought was like really cool or that you liked? I'll let you guys. I want to hear what you guys think about this because like you guys are comparing, and then I'll tell you what, what I thought. Okay. Two really good improvements were one removing the scene where they did the reshoots with Henry Cavill with the CGI face. Removing that was a good idea. It was pointless <laughs> in the first place. I remember being annoyed that it was in the first one. And the second really good move was completely redoing Steppenwolf. Because the original version of, of Steppenwolf looked crazy to me. He looked like, he reminded me to, of Ivan Ooze. Whereas this one at least looked menacing. And there were some cool scenes like when he hmm. was able to flex his armor and destroy those arrows. I was like, okay, that was cool. That was coolish, yeah. I'm already convinced that I should not watch the original. <laughs> yes. I did part of my research. I found out that in the comics, Steppenwolf is Darkseid's uncle. But they he portrayed it like he was his minion. And then they said, you betrayed your family. But they didn't explain any of that. <laughs> so if you knew the comics, it didn't connect to the comics. I'm like, wait a minute. What is going on here? I was just going to say, the only reference they make to it is when they say, like, you betrayed your family. And I was like, oh. And then I... I I think I read that, that he was supposed to be Darkseid's uncle, and I was like, oh. All of this could be completely fine if they just had a couple more movies. In the Marvel Universe, they have, like, Ronin, and Loki, and Ultron, and Hela, and all of these mini, they, they are, are all culminating to, to Thanos. Yes. And in this, it's like... It's all introduced in this one movie, and everything is just explained all at once, and nothing is shown to you and, and like, just kind of put out. Nothing is, is, oh, my God, it's just explained. Everything is explained. It, exactly. <laughs> that's not even true, and that's what I was going to say. It's But what you get <laughs> is only explained. It's still not enough yes. to explain things. Think about it this get... way. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, but 66, think about it this way. There was less explanation in the first one. So think about yep. how confused people were in the first one. One of my things that I liked was that they explained more in this, and it still wasn't enough. <laughs> no. No, and the fact that they had to explain everything made it so so unbearable. Like, just break it into two movies, or have another movie that's an individual, like, I don't know, have a Flash movie or something, or a Cyborg movie that could explain some more of this crap. A Flash movie would have been a great idea because then they could have explained the Speed Force. Uh huh. I said the same and thing. And that would have been a very important explanation so that you could understand why the Flash can travel back in time. And why he didn't want to at the end, and he was like, yeah. oh, well, I have to. This is definitely contradicting that, because I liked how they elaborated on Cyborg's story. I, I like that, actually, a lot, because yeah. they, made, I guess, made you feel for him more and made a more more of a point for him, versus last time was kind of like, hey, I'm Cyborg, and that's it. I And, and the weight of the world's on me. That's it. So, but, but I also disagree that they didn't really need to do the backstories for any of the characters. So, you know, as a comic book person, I don't need to know that Flash can do that because I'm into comics. It changes the way I view it. I didn't need every single explanation. But it's not even that you necessarily need the explanation. It would just be something as simple, like much like in Ant-Man, we learn about the quantum realm so that when it's referenced, when we get to Endgame, it's like, oh yeah, like in Ant-Man. So even if it was just like Thank a you. Flash movie where you understand that there is the speed force and it can allow the Flash to do something. But he did. He talked about that. He he did say, he really roughly said it in like one sentence. What that's he, what he did, yeah. In one it, sentence. Yeah, and I'm like, that to me, that suffice. 
that's where he gets his ability. I so. took a sip of my iced tea at that point and oh, I and missed it because my dog was barking. Like, like yeah. if you literally, if you blink, you miss it. And so, like, what's the? It doesn't. I mean, doesn't I understand. Help. I'm familiar with the Speed Force because I watched the CW version of the yeah. Flash. I've watched older things. I've seen the Flashpoint movie, but that still, for the people who are watching this movie, it would have been nice if they had the same kind of build up to this, all of these moments like you had in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There was no Marvel's Assemble moment. There was no moment in this where you were like, yes, Yes. (laughs) there was none of that. That, that, But that's because there was no buildup to it. So I've been saying since the very beginning, way before the show and everything, they could have started with Justice League. That's fine. But then don't throw in stuff that's really important and not tell us about it. Like, don't have them fight Stephen Wolf and Darkseid. Have them fight Lex Luthor. And then the second movie, just like, all right, so he fought Loki in the the first Avengers, and then they worked up to the bigger, badder villains. That's the way I thought. So I kind of agree that it would have been nice to have those movies if you wanted it the Marvel way. But if you didn't want it the Marvel way, that's also fine. But then don't make all these important moments like one set in story plots. Like, that's that's where I was at. Yeah, don't make it dependent on having this information. Like, just make it... Make it a movie where, you know what, they team up, they need to fight a bad guy, and maybe they start to reference things, but they're, but like, it shouldn't be something where you need to have backstory for things to land that you don't have yet. I know. <laughs> and that's what this whole movie f- felt like. Like, it felt like they wanted it to be their Avengers Endgame, but without any of the buildup, so none of the moments could land like they're supposed to. 100%. 100%. If they wanted to make this movie before the buildup, then don't make it anything like the like finale and of all these moments that you've been waiting for. Make it like the introduction to all of these moments that you're going to learn about, but they can't even do that because there aren't going to be any more movies in this <laughs> franchise, so... That's exactly right. That's my point. So then what's the with the ending? Well, we're not up to the ending yet. That... Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, man. We're not up to the end. Oh. Okay. All right. Don't get Sorry. me started. We'll, all right, we'll get to that's... it. <laughs> To yeah. comment on what Walter said, Cyborg was way better portrayed. Like, there was a cemetery scene where they dig up Superman. And in the original, there was two sentences that explained a lot. But even in this movie, it had more substance. So I will give him credit. But in the original, Cyborg was, like, trying to pull apart the mother boxes. And I was like, what is the? What is he going to do? He's a robot. Mm-hmm. However, in this one, they explained that those are, are AI. Those are robot boxes, right? Mm-hmm. So in the first one, I'm like, what the hell is the point of this character? Superman's way stronger, but now it makes sense that he's a robot doing it. So, like, there were some things that were explained better, I think. And that is kind of, like, what's happening at the end is he's basically communicating with them. Yeah. And that's how he's able to impact and be the one that has to be involved in keeping the mother boxes apart. And obviously Superman, with his immense strength, can help. Whereas, you know, Batman, for example, should stay away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Can, can I comment on that? He had to be protected almost at the every end scene, and I was just dying. Like Wonder Woman had to come in and block the shots for him. Aquaman, everybody. I was like, dude, you are so useless right now. Like this is insane. I laughed a lot at Batman's expense in this movie. <laughs> That's so strange because I, I, okay, I love the Batman Dark Knight, Batman Begins. Yep. You know, I love that Batman. But I actually like this Batman. Oh, no. Really? I am so surprised at myself that Ben Affleck surprised the heck out of me in Batman v Superman and this Batman. He is a great Batman. That Batman is fantastic. The look of the character, he is fantastic. He's not the best Bruce Wayne. I agree with that a little. I gotta say, the lumbering nature of Ben Affleck's Batman is so laughable to me because Batman, a big part of what makes Batman great is he is an agile ninja type character. But Ben Affleck is an enormous man in a giant heavy suit (laughs) who we are meant to believe is moving kind of quickly, but I know he's not. I'm seeing it. You know he's not. (laughs) He's going to jump from the ceiling and land and not make a sound when he's that big. And, boom. And (laughs) Batman, just just in in general, like, 
what they are fighting here are these, you know, demonic, godlike creatures who wipe, basically were able to wipe out the Amazons, and then Batman's just, like, kicking and punching them, and they're, you know, getting hurt from that. You're not wrong. Essentially, Aquaman is fighting and, like, taking massive hits from them. Wonder Woman is getting knocked back by them. And then Batman comes in and he, like, kicks one and it goes flying. I'm like, come on, no, it wouldn't. You're a guy. You're just a guy. <laughs> You're not wrong. I just, I, I kind of like the look. I'm just telling you how I feel. I thought I would hate him as Batman, the Ben Affleck Batman. I thought I would hate him. And I kind of liked it. I, I was really surprised. It's kind of the nature of Batman in these, like, Justice League situations, though, because really all he can do is hang back. Or if he gets in the fight, they have to at least make it seem like he's useful. He's the brains behind behind the operation, and he should be in the ship behind them. Firing which is, which is what he should be. He should be the brains that hangs back, because yeah. he's not useful in a brawl against gods. He's useful in a brawl against human thugs. Sure. But Batman is a guy. <laughs> so, so I'm going to shock you. I actually kind of agree with you, because I hated... Ben Affleck, though, in Batman v Superman, I thought that Batman was stupid, and I think that hate continued to the previous Justice League, and I hated it. But this one, I was like, oh, you know what? I could see it. And I do, I did like him in this one. However, I think that's also because I know who's going to take the cow next. And, um, <laughs> so I'm just like, no, anybody, please, just to keep it going. So. Well, I will agree that he, I don't like him as Bruce Wayne. He can't do the flip like a Michael Keaton or even like a Christian Bale. Yeah, he's not the Bruce Wayne. And I do agree with Ryan Lyon that he is not an agile. But over time, it took me a while, but over time, the like brooding kind of, I'm kind of pissed off at the world. I was like, all right, well, I believe that part, I guess, because he really is. And honestly, I don't even mind Ben Affleck. I just think the way that Batman's character was supposed to be behaving in these situations isn't how Batman should be behaving in these situations, which isn't Affleck's fault. But there was a scene where there was, uh, you know, one of these like demon guys were literally just shooting at Batman from, you know, a couple yards away, and he was dodging them. Batman. <laughs> isn't faster than a bullet <laughs> he's not i know he's not that's just a fact about him he's a guy he's a man he is a man who is fast for a human who would would be shot and dead <laughs> there were comics where batman like wielded a gun correct like he was a gun wielding anti-hero oh yeah what about his gauntlets in this one did that help you at all i think they stole that from black panther just Stealing Wonder Woman's power? They stole that from Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was Black Panther is what I thought of because it was the of it absorbed the energy and yeah. you, it absorbed the kinetic energy so you didn't take the hit and you could lash it back out. That's Wonder Woman's thing, isn't it? Because that's why she went, why don't you make him a lasso too then? Oh, a black that's one. what her joke was. Because she has the ball. <laughs> that's, exactly uh, right? <laughs> that's exactly right. I think this is a good cast of actors, right? You have like Willem Dafoe oh, yeah. showing up. You have Jeremy Irons. These are, these are good actors. Amy Adams and Diane, like... I think these are all good actors, but for some reason, 90% of them don't fit the character. Does that make sense? Like, when I say Robert Downey Jr., you think Iron Man. Chris Hemsworth, you think Thor. Like, I can't picture them almost as anything else. But these people are at great actors. I just don't see them as... Maybe Henry Cavill, Superman, I don't know. 50%, like Henry Cavill as Superman. Okay. Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. I oh, think Gal Gadot, great. 100%, yeah. Yeah. Gal Gadot, yeah. Aquaman, like, he's he's pretty solid as Aquaman. I've grown to like him, too, a little more than I thought. I am personally not a huge fan of the casting of Ezra Miller as The Flash. I think that it is, no. it is very no. difficult oh. for me, because I love The Flash as a character. I think that the character of The Flash is funny which i enjoy mm -hmm. i think ezra miller's flash is annoying and i don't enjoy He's, him uh, i Ready? enjoyed his barry allen <laughs> mm, i don't know but i hated his flash i hated both I can't stand this weenie guy running, like, skating, whatever he's doing. I like the guy, for, I like Grant Gustin from the TV show way better. I, I agree, I think Grant Gustin, who is also a very skinny man, but he just... Yep. He does, he, he, he portrays he, it he better, I don't know. He fits the role better, in my yeah. opinion. Ready, d ready? This Flash is basically Justin Long from J Dodgeball. <laughs> yeah. That is what <laughs> I, I agree. I, I think... Yo! That's I so I saw true. that, I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is horrible. Yeah. Either of the two Quicksilvers are better than this. Either Flash. of the yep. two Quicksilvers. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> About this movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, <laughs> I, I, I did not watch the original, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I watched Man, uh, Man of Steel. 
then Batman v Superman, and then this one in three days. And at the end of Batman v Superman, the casket is in the ground, and the, 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 the dirt starts to rise, and you're like, oh my god, he's alive. Superman's alive. And then you get to this movie, and he's just dead. For two and a half hours. Yeah. What the hell? That uh, they that made that one scene totally irrelevant. <laughs> yes, yeah. that, that made it completely irrelevant. Scene, and it was it was made by it was made by Zack Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it wasn't like it wasn't like um, Ryan Johnson made it. And then J.J. Abrams came back and did something different. It was literally Zack Snyder that made both movies. So what the hell? Can you guys explain this? I read an interview with no. Zack Snyder where he said that he thinks that every superhero movie needs to end with like some sort of cliffhanger ending because he said that's kind of how comic books are. Like the comics always end with a cliffhanger ending, so he thinks that the okay. movie should. So I think that he put that in because without it, then it's just finite. But if you put that in, then, then it raises questions. Yes, but you have to have the idea to pick it up at the next one. So, yeah. and, and if he's the, literally going to be the one directing the next one, then he should have that idea already. I don't think that his thought process is continuity. It's just no. It has to end with with a question. And will it be answered? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. But it's got to be there. <laughs> because think about the ending of this movie. I mean, oh wait, we're not it, there but... yet. I said this about the first Justice League, but this one was two and a half hours of a Justice League movie without Superman. Can mm -hmm. I comment on that? Please. Yeah. To me, that actually made it better. Okay. I hated that this movie was four hours long, but in the first one, it's just like, oh no, we need Superman, and he's there. Versus this one, you okay. really had to wait for it. You knew it was coming, so it's kind of like, all right, your your entrance was more impactful. I don't like the way they did it, but <laughs> it would it, it made it more impactful for me. To me. Okay, I, I I can I see your point of view. I just had to ask because I, I didn't understand. We don't either. <laughs> okay, okay, that's all that I need to know. So I have two comic booky questions. One, does anyone know if Cyborg is actually made from the mother boxes in the comics but that did make sense in this movie and was superman brought back by a mother box in the comics because that makes a little less sense in this movie because he but so. i don't think so I, I don't think, think he came back from that. I yeah, I think the cyborg part is correct and the superman part is not okay because i watched a different dc movie called justice league war and it was basically this story, but it was made in 2014. It was animated. It was only an hour and 20 minutes. And I actually thought it was better. <laughs> All the animateds are better. They had uh, similar elements of, like, they needed to use this to save Cyborg. But Superman is just kind of there the whole time. There was nothing about him being dead. Because I know he dies in the comics and he gets brought back. He I does. Um, so, I mean, the, the comics are after he died. They stole Superman's body from the crypt and placed him inside a Kryptonian device okay. uh, inside his Fortress of Solitude called yeah. the Regeneration Matrix. So it's similar. Okay. Well, then I'm okay, I'm okay with that. I think when Darkseid actually shows up in the comics, I think Superman's already around. I believe Darkseid's plan is to control Superman, and that is how he's going to win and conquer, is by controlling Superman and using him to his advantage. And they had a dream about that in this movie, yeah, which was not really explained. So we're almost at that. We're almost at the ending. That's no. I, I mean, there's so much to talk about in this movie that we don't have to get to the ending right now. I'm just saying. Well, I did want to say I, when they brought Superman back, that was a part I will say that was this that was close to the first one that I liked. I like when mm -hmm. they're all fighting Superman and the Flash is running really fast and he does that like side look. With it. I'm like, all right, that's yeah. That stuff was in the first one. That's cool. It was in this one and it was the same and it was cool and it goes. I love Wonder Woman and. She she just takes like a headbutt. I mean, like she's, I don't know what the hell the other ones are even here for. It should just be Superman and Wonder Woman for God's sakes. But I like that scene and that was very close to the original. So I will say some of the stuff transferred over okay for mm. me. The slow-mo made sense there too. And the slow-mo made sense there, yes. <laughs> it's a nod to the comics, makes sense in the moment. The slow motion, like that all made sense. That one scene out of four hours <laughs> of scenes. We should have mentioned this up top, but this movie, <laughs> it was in the four by three aspect ratio. And if you don't know what, that's yep. pretty much like old television, it's square. And we know that he wanted it in black and white. So it was supposed to be black and white and four by three. That's like 
a movie you would watch from 1945. <laughs> I guess I want to know, did it bother you? I found out why they kind of did it, but did it bother you? Did you were you okay with it? And did you like that choice? Did it even not make a dent in your you know watching this? I don't think it made much difference. Like I, I it tells you right at the beginning that oh, uh, per Zack Snyder's vision, this is going to be in four three aspect ratio. So I knew it was happening. It didn't bother me. I don't think it added anything for sure. The the only thing that I would say is because of the whole cube thing in the beginning of the movie, I was like, okay, so they want to make the whole movie a square because there's these cubes involved. That's the <laughs> only thing I thought of. Like, that's the only, I hope that's it. That's the <laughs> only like, reason oh, I thought of Oh, there are it. mother boxes in this movie, so it should be a box that we're watching. There is only one thing I found that's very technical was, so when you go to an IMAX movie and you see an IMAX movie, everyone's like, oh, it fills up the whole screen. That's a whole big misnomer. But it's not really technically wider, it's taller. Because when you go to a movie theater, there's like bars on the top and the bottom and IMAX fills up the whole movie. So what I found out was the reason they did that was because when they filmed it, they think that there's more of the frame top and bottom that you're missing. It was like a very artistic point that if this was in the theaters, I don't think it would have been like that. I think it would have just been in IMAX. And if that was the one thing that made this movie like over the top, it would have been great. But it, it, there were so many other issues with this movie <laughs> that it doesn't even matter. Like, fine, whatever, dude, make it a square. More about his artistic vision was breaking it into into six parts, which did not seem Ugh. necessary. I didn't think that those six parts really served any real purpose. I think it was a an old movie technique where, like Quentin Tarantino, think about like Kill Bill and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. but those made sense. But yeah, you're right. Those made sense. These were just like like this was basically like. Well, I think it was better. It was still the same story that we saw in the first Justice League movie, and it it wasn't broken up into six different segments. It was just that same story still, one complete story that he added a bunch of stuff onto. Hey, to to, to be fair, I think he was trying to do you a favor by letting you know this is where you can break it because who wants to sit through a four hour movie <laughs> so he's like no 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 here you can stop and come back another time oh, the flash dude the flash just killed me i really wanted him to be good at least he had a comedic relief like the like man of steel and batman v superman and even this movie for a long time like i was i was missing that comedic relief like marvel movies have that and it's great Every Marvel movie has a comedic relief situation, and 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 these movies are just and it fits. And these movies are just like oh, so goddamn serious all the time. So we touched on it a little bit, where we're obviously comparing this to Marvel. There's no way you can't. Marvel is the one of the biggest movie companies out there for the past ten years, twelve years. Obviously, this wasn't Marvel, so. I guess is it could it have been or should it have been or should they went in a different direction or should we not have compared it although we, there was no way we could have yes 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 and no <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> it doesn't need to be marvel like every single marvel movie is the same thing they all are different do different things and still they're all really enjoyable all they had to do was make an enjoyable movie it didn't have to be avengers endgame it didn't have to be anything all it had to do was be a good movie and i think that's where they fell short <laughs> but it was very obvious what they were trying to do and if they were trying to do that they tried to do it too quickly and they just needed like two extra years and two extra movies and it would have been just fine yeah again it, it, this movie should have been the introduction to what this universe could be it felt like they wanted this to be like a build-up of moments that landed and you were like oh yeah i've been waiting for that and it just couldn't be because you weren't and that's how i worded it i was like there could have been moments like that mm -hmm. if they did it differently yeah like instead of spending like uh, whatever that scene didn't really bother me but instead of spending like five minutes on making tea <laughs> you have a conversation with the flash about why he can't reverse time and then at the end of this four hours you're like oh no he said earlier i can't do this mm -hmm. don't do it don't do it Fla like that that was never there like that's what i'm saying like there could have been moments obviously there was no you know captain america grabbing the hammer but there was no build up that was my there's no build up in the other movies and there's no build up in this movie to the ending of this movie i also thought it, it was interesting the way they uh brought martian manhunter in <laughs> so stupid but i thought it was very funny that they brought him in twice <laughs> like if they just brought him in the one time it would be like oh okay so they're teasing martian manhunter but then they brought him back a second time i'm like why is he back like i already got the tease i know like there's like two minutes left <laughs> 
Oh. I was here, but I didn't help you with the big bad fight scene at the uh, end. Yeah, <laughs> I was just watching. Sorry, guys. I read that originally that little cameo was supposed to be the Green Lantern, but uh, Warner Brothers said, no dice, we have different plans for the Green Lantern. So then Snyder was like, all right, well, then you got to give me Martian Manhunter. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Which I don't understand why Warner Brothers would say that because w another scene that I did like was the flashback scene when they fought Darkseid the first time. Yeah, and the ring went flying. Really? Oh, my God, I hated that Lord of the Rings scene. And you're like, there's the Green Lantern ring going flying. And you never pick up on it. Wait, you didn't like that fight? I thought it explained. Oh my god, no. Pointless to me. Was it pointless because they I, still kept was... the mother boxes on Earth? <sighs> what the hell was the point of that? They were all together. So Darkseid referenced this anti-life equation that yeah. Darkseid is like, oh, it's there? But he had been there. Why didn't he know that? <laughs> I literally wrote this down. Anti-life? Question mark? I wanted to add this to my Marvel comparison too, but... What did you think of the big bad guy? Who was it, at, actually? Darkseid. Well, in the comic books, nice. Darkseid and Stephen Wolf, they're like rated like the top like comic villains of all time or whatever. But in my opinion, they had no reason for what they were doing, right? Just... It was just like I want to take over the I want to take over the universe. Like that's yes. a typical bad guy yeah. uh, motive, right? The bad guy's like I want to take over the universe, whatever. Comparing that once again to Marvel. Whether you liked it, you didn't like it, Thanos, he had a strong reason for doing what he did. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or even Man of Steel. Or even Batman v Superman. Like, is Batman v Superman great? No. But Lex Luthor is a <laughs> way better bad guy. He has a purpose. Not not, not the Batman v Superman one. Yeah, well, Lex Luthor in this purpose. one, he has He's a purpose. Right. Yeah, just in general, as a villain, I think Lex Yes, Luthor as a villain, and... like... That's what I thought the whole time. Like, all right, these guys are just bad guys. Nothing makes them special. They just want to take over the universe for whatever reason. Well, whatever. I agree. That's where I compared it to Thanos. I'm like, he had a reason for wanting to destroy half the universe. That was a reason that you could understand. And the other thing was they told you the reason. This one didn't tell you shit. This one didn't yeah, it seemed like it was just, you know, total domination. And he was like, well, th these guys are next up because we already dominated a bunch of other places. So now we're at this one. Because when Wonder Woman finds that arrow that was shot across the world, which is great, um, she goes into that cave and there's a picture of Darkseid. They could have easily explained more about him right there. Yeah. Like, all it was was a picture, and she's like, oh, crap, it's that it's just, guy. Yeah, it's just too many explanations. Like, how many times can Wonder Woman tell you the history of how bad things happen? <laughs> like, that's how that's how you found out that first war with the Green Lantern ring flying through the air, and then no one picks it up. That's her. She's the one that tells everything. And my last thing is, did you like how this looked? Like, the aesthetic. Meaning, there is a behind-the-scenes photo, Clark and Lois on the farm. Like, when he, go, when he wakes up again, and the sky's, like, orange and everything. They filmed it with a blue sky, but they filmed it on a green screen. Mm. And that was my biggest takeaway. I, I know movies take place in space and they're fake, but this one just didn't do it for me. Maybe it was the effects, but it doesn't look real or grounded anywhere. And that's my example, is when you replace a blue sky with a red sky just because you can, that's like the downfall of special effects, in my opinion. Well, I feel like it's definitely not grounded somewhere. I never understood the geography of the DC universe. <laughs> I mean, I know that yeah. Metropolis and Gotham are pretty close to each other, but also Aquaman, like, as soon as Bruce Wayne says, oh, I'm from Gotham, he's like, oh, that crap hole? Like, why does he know anything about Gotham? <laughs> right. Is Gotham also <laughs> right near Atlantis? I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were going to say when they broke a hole and the, and the water came in, they're like, oh, that's the Atlantic Ocean, and he just so happens to be <laughs> right, there. Because Atlantis, in the Atlantic tube. Ocean, yeah. I think the CG of the characters were the downfall for me. Like, if you it, it, stop replacing skies and start focusing that money on Cyborg's body, like, that would be better for me. Like, you probably wake up at the crack of dawn to get the perfect lighting, and then you put them in front of a green screen. What the hell is the... I don't know. I hate it. I also like how Cyborg's entire body was thrusters. Like, it seemed like 
every part of his body had a thruster attached to it. Like every time, just like his whole body turned into thrusters when it needed to. It's like, oh, all right, they're all over. Yeah, Iron Man. Does anyone want to say anything before we talk about the ending? Because I don't even know where to start with this one. So yes, <laughs> one thing at the end of the movie when they're fighting, the Flash is just running in circles, waiting for Victor to like he's just running in circles, right? Barry Allen, like, oh, you're the really good. He's, he's building running. up speed. He had to. Right? And he's just building up speed. And his, I hope you say the part I want. His arms are just flailing like this. Terrible running style, but he's running really fast. Okay, and then this just random stormtrooper. He's gonna say the part. <laughs> happens to hit him in the in the chat. Like yeah. he just happens to hit him. A I random this, a stormtrooper. I said the same thing. So this goes back to what I was saying. You remember how Batman was dodging those lasers at like point blank range, and the Flash. <laughs> The Flash gets hit by one? Are you kidding me? Like, that guy lined up his shot and hit the Flash? How did he see the Flash? How how could he have possibly, conceivably, remotely planned that? Like, if anything, it would have been better if a guy was just randomly firing and that hit him. But this guy lined up his shot as yes. though it is possible to catch the Flash. But he couldn't hit, but they, but they couldn't hit Batman. He must have sold a ring and seen him where he was going. Was I insane. said the same exact, I'm so happy everyone's, I said the same thing. How could he possibly? I'm glad you said that because I thought this, I'm like, this one minion is going to hit the flash going light speed. Thank you. Like, that that bothered the crap out of me. I didn't even connect it with Ryan the Lion's point about Batman, but that's very very frustrating. I don't even know where to start about the ending. So let's <laughs> say they they defeat Steppenwolf, right? They defeat the big bad guy, and then there's a happy ending, blah blah blah, and then there's all this extra stuff. Some of it, which was filmed specifically for this, and some of it, spoiler alert, was a dream, which I wrote. What the hell is going on? Oh, it's a dream. Was the dream the Joker thing? That was the dream? Yes. Yes. Okay. Which he had a dream earlier in the movie. But anyway. Well, he also had one of these dreams in Batman vs. Superman. Which is what I wanted to ask. If What is he setting up? What is, what, what is the... Like, Ooh. let's assume... Let, oh, you know this? Let's assume he was doing more. So what did the yacht this. scene set up? What did the dream set up? And we don't even have to count the Martian Manhunter scene. But what, what was the plan here? So I read an article that basically uh, Zack Snyder gave like a summary of what his plan was going to be if he'd been able to make additional movies. And essentially, I mean, it didn't explain everything. Like, it didn't explain, like, what was going on with Lex Luthor, but, like, he gave, like, broad strokes. Okay. And essentially what it was is that <laughs> Batman... What? Oh man, it's a mess. <laughs> Batman was supposed to defend Lois Lane, and he failed. Okay. And so Lois died, and when that happened, that is when Superman essentially lost his will to fight and allowed, not intentionally, but essentially like in this moment of weakness, Darkseid was able to use the anti-life formula to take over Superman and control him because that's essentially what the it allows you to do is control anyone you want so he was able to control Superman and that is how Darkseid was able to win and dominate and you know uh, Aquaman dies Wonder Woman dies and then in order to fix this the Flash has to travel back in time and Batman has to sacrifice himself to save Lois Lane. And then Superman is able to defeat Darkseid. That would have been a great Justice League movie. But, but it's Avengers Endgame! It's Avengers Endgame! <laughs> yes. Uh, no, this has been out before Avengers Endgame. Yeah. The good guys yeah. lose, and then they have to go back in time, and the billionaire has to sacrifice himself. <laughs> That, that's the story of Injustice. To, injustice. It, that was in the comics. Yeah. But wait, yeah. so... My one question is, in Batman vs. Superman, when Barry has that moment where he finds Bruce Wayne, right? And he's like, he's like, am I too early? Am I too early? Like, yep. Lois is the key. Yep. He's referencing something that we're not going to see for, like, th th a couple movies. Exactly. And also, Zack Snyder made reference that when uh, Batman is supposed to be protecting Lois Lane, that they have, like, a thing while uh, when Superman's dead. So that's awkward. It, none of that is referenced here. Like, they don't allude to that at all. But apparently, in Zack Snyder's mind, when Superman was dead, uh, Bruce Wayne and Lois Lane hooked up. That's fine. Superman would take one of them in anyway, so we're good. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say I got maybe a fourth 
or an eighth of that in that scene. Yeah. Like I got, I got, once I realized, all right, it's the future, I guess. And they said Lois died. And then Joker had that weird thing about, I guess, Robin died. Like all these people dying that we, we don't know about. His portrayal of the Joker, uh, it's mm, terrible, right? Terrible. Can, Wow. Yeah, terrible. I wanted to think he was going to do a good job, and he didn't. It was so pointless. It was so pointless. Yeah, they were saying about the F bomb. He had one. Yeah, pointless. Luther was doing the um, Legion of Doom. He was setting that that's up. That's what yeah. I thought too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought that's how it should start. I think it, I thought I thought it should start with the. I know Lex Luthor is a great villain, but the the non god villains. <laughs> yes. You start lower and then you go higher. And that's how you could int yeah introduce all the heroes. Yep. Yeah. Like and you could have done that because at the end of Batman v Superman you saw him like messing around with those boxes. He could have been the first line of defense leading up to that god. Just like Loki was going to Ronin was going to to Thanos. It very well could have been something like that. Why was Luther in Arkham? Because Gotham City is right next to Metropolis. <laughs> Which I didn't even think that was a thing. They should not even be that close. No, they are. Because that's the case. They they tell you in, that in... In a comic world, they're in Batman v Superman, which I, I hated. In Batman v Superman, you find out that they're right next to each other. <laughs> but that's not how it's supposed to be. I think they are pretty close in the comics too, aren't they? That made no sense. <laughs> no, I thought Metropolis... Was further. I thought like Metropolis was New York and Gotham was like Chicago. Oh, okay. They literally was in distance. And then Green Lantern lives on California. I think Green Lantern. No, they were like right next to each other in Batman v Superman. They set that up. It's like that was. That's why like Bruce Wayne is there watching Superman fight. Like, oh, what what is this guy? That's what I thought, right? I, am I wrong in the? Co I thought it was like New York, Chicago. I think you're right. It, it doesn't make any sense if Superman was right next door that he didn't help Batman at all through all this. That's what I. Because he could just flick every single guy and be like, I'm even good. just in a world where like they're all on the same planet i mean you would think at some <laughs> point in time you would see the news that like oh there's this wonder woman person fighting someone over here oh there's there's this aquaman <laughs> guy doing some oh oh like i'm superman i could be there in two seconds yeah <laughs> it just bothered me because i'm saying there's no jails in metropolis apparently so i was like all right cool oh and superman can also hear like everything that's going on in the world if he wants to at any given time so he also knows just what's going on i mean i like superman but that makes it he just ignores a lot of stuff i guess yeah he ignores a lot of stuff <laughs> <laughs> he ignores a lot of stuff. He lets a lot fly, you know? He's like a, a really laid-back teacher. Batman sitting there with, like, 100 guys, like, strangling him. He's like, nah, he'll get out of it. It's fedora. It's <laughs> Let's rate this, everybody. It's going to be great. But before we rate it, I'm going to show you... Well, first of all, I'll show you this. <laughs> the original Justice League in 2017, the critics gave it a 40%, and the audience gave it a 71%. Audience like the original. But they liked the original, I don't think, because it was good, because everyone likes Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. But this one, the critics gave it a 75%, which maybe still is high, but I see that I see why it would be higher. But the audience gave it a 97% because they wanted it. I don't think there was a reason. They just, they just wanted it. And IMDb, on average, gave it an 8.4, which is closer you know what i mean like it's closer to what i would assume it should be they gave the original oh a 6.2 so a 6.2 to like an 8 all right so this one was better but was it that much better so i guess that's my final question was was it better was it that much better and what is your banana rating out of 10 i know 66 can't answer was it better so you'll just answer i would love to know what your guys like original rating would be like comparative but um okay so let's start with well 66 how about you go and you'll just tell us what you thought of this one and then we'll kind of go off of that yeah this is getting like uh this is getting a five bananas for me mm -hmm. it's not terrible but it's not very good it's too much in one movie i've it's, i've said this so many times in this conversation that we've had it needs to be spread out it needs to be slowed down there's too many villains there's too many ex it's, there's too many explanations. It's just, it's too much. Too much for one movie. Four hours, stop. <laughs> Walter, try to rate the first one if you like and compare it, and what would you rate this one? I hated, <laughs> hated the original. I thought, uh, I hated Batman v Superman. I just think DC does a horrible job with their movies, and I would have given, I did, and still will give the original a three. So, I guess people liked it but i'm not sure why this one better yes but that is really not saying much and i really don't think it's worth watching four hours i think that 75 percent critics 97 percent audience what are you smoking because you need to give me some because that i didn't see the same movie as you guys did i would give it a four just just to be nice that's higher 
but not much higher. Well, because I yeah, it's not that much better. All right, Ryan the Lion, I, you can go next. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely better. I did not like the first Justice League movie at all. I haven't seen it in a while, but trying to think back, I feel like I would probably give it about a 3.5 bananas for the original. And for this one, I would give it 5 bananas. I thought it, it was fine. It was okay. It was definitely better than what we had the first time around, but I still just don't think it's a very good movie. And I definitely don't think that people should earnestly watch this for four hours i watched this with a certain sense of irony so i was able to enjoy it for that reason because i thought the whole thing was hilarious that this was being made i knew that it was going to be ridiculous to me and it was ridiculous so i got some enjoyment out of that but i just don't think it's any better than five bananas I'm on the same page the the first one was was bad and you can give it reasons why it was bad the director left, not his fault that he left, and then all this crazy stuff happened. But it was not good. It just wasn't a good movie, the first one. And there needed to be way more explanation. I was at, like, about a 4.5 for the first one. It was Superman. I like Superman. I like Wonder Woman. I like Batman. But it didn't mesh together. This one, I will classify this one as, if there's, like, a filmmaker's dictionary, and you have, like, Spielberg and all this stuff, and there's a picture of Zack Snyder... This is the movie. This movie is so Zack Snyder, I can't even explain it. I love slow motion, but this movie could have easily been two hours, and you could have got the same effect from it. Yes, it was better. <laughs> yes, there were moments I liked, but it still wasn't that good. I guess I'm a little more generous, but I would only go up about two points, and I'm at a six out of ten. I kind of watched it like Ryan the Lion. I laughed. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's new. I watched it because I had to. As a, a lover of these kind of movies, I just felt like I had to watch it. That was basically what it was. Could you imagine if Star Wars made a movie like this twice? <laughs> 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 what would happen? I think every movie that Zack Snyder makes, he has to make twice. Because, you know, the first one is always like, no, nah, no, nah, that wasn't my true vision. And then you get the director's cut and he's like, this was my true vision. And it's like, hey, that was a little bit better. I will add that I watch every behind the scenes on a DVD or a Blu-ray. That's what I love. I love watching everything about it, making up everything. The one segment that I very rarely, if ever, watch is the deleted scene segment. Mm. Because every time I do, I'm like, yeah, that needed to be deleted. Yep. It's very rare that I'll find a scene where I'm like, oh, wow, that explains a lot. It was one time in like the Patriot where I'm like, oh, that scene should have been in there. <laughs> but very rarely, I'm like, it should have been deleted. And this was two and a half hours of deleted scenes essentially. Some of them made a little sense, but most of it could have stayed on the cutting room floor because it didn't change that much. It changed a little. I think we're the only reviewers out there that ripped this one apart, I'm just saying. It can't be true. It can't be true. I don't get it, man. <laughs> like I said, I enjoyed watching it. I thought it was funny. But in no world, if the first Justice League movie didn't exist and this was what we got, I would be so angry that this was the justice league movie yeah. but because we had the first one and this is the revamp which makes me chuckle <laughs> i enjoy that and i and that allowed me to give it the five like you I don't... guys are saying like that's a good thing giving it fives and sixes is not really good no yeah, that, that, is is good. Good. <laughs> that is my yeah, point that is the point <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to see 66 watch it so he could be like, what in the world was that? <laughs> Look, and, and this is coming from people that love superhero movies. Like, literally, Walter is wearing a Flash shirt. You know what I mean? Drinking yep. Yep. from a Flash I water know. bottle. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. we're, you love Superman. I mean, I yeah. know. I, I, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. That we don't like this. We they, should they love it, dirty. yes. They did us dirty. Now, tell us what you thought. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and come back anytime and join the conversation. You're always welcome here at the Entertainment Jungle. <laughs>